Hi, my name's Matt Widgery from mattwidgery.com. In today's episode, we're going to be doing the unboxing of the Sigma 17-50 f2.8 EX DC OS. Um, so, uh, for those of you that are wondering why you should be interested in such a thing, if you have a crop sensored uh, body, something with an APS-C size sensor as opposed to a full frame sensor, uh, then you are um, most likely to be looking for a, a, a kind of mid-range zoom um, which gives you something which is pretty wide um, up to something which is just a little bit beyond the sort of normal, so slightly telephoto. Um, if you're in full frame, so you've got something like a Canon 5D Mark, whatever it is, or a D700, D600, D800, or, or whatever, um, then that has the same size sensor as an old 35mm film SLR camera, and so therefore, if it says 50mm on it, it is 50mm. With the APS-C size stuff, then it's kind of, you, because you're only using a, a small bit in the middle of the lens, all the lenses effectively get a longer focal range or focal length than what it says on the tin. So that's why, for example, your crop sensored uh, body comes with the standard kit lens, which is 18 to 55 millimeter, and that works out uh, broadly equivalent to, you know, something like the 24 to 70 would on a full frame sensor. But the difference is that with the standard kit lens that you get with these cameras, it's a variable f, uh, variable aperture uh, lens, and that means that as you zoom in, it gets darker. So three and a half, it's okay actually, it's not too bad, it's not the greatest, it won't let the best light in the world in, but it's certainly usable. But when you're out at 5.6, so when you're at 55 millimeter, fully extended, that aperture stops down to f5.6 and that means it's much much harder to get uh, light into the sensor and therefore uh, you run into problems if you're shooting in low light. Um, also if you're using it for video uh, you know you, you the, the thing will, will, will shut down uh, the, the aperture will shut down while you're filming if you're zooming in from the, the, the widest aperture that you've got set on the camera and so stuff will get darker as you zoom in which looks a bit funny. Um, so a really good alternative would be to go for something like the 17 50, um, which gives you a equivalent focal range of something like the 18 to 55. It's not far off, and it works out again something similar to you know the 24 to 70 that you'd get from Nikon, Nikon Canon, and so forth. Um, but the crucial thing here is that it is a fixed f2.8 aperture at the widest setting. The other nice thing about this in terms of uh, using it for video is that you've got OS, which is optical stabilization. Uh, so all in all, it's a pretty decent uh, spec. So let's have a look at the actual uh, contents of the box and see if uh, what's inside matches up to our expectations. So inside um, we have uh, some gubbins, which I won't go through. There's a warranty card. Uh, there's some stuff in Japanese uh, for those of you. Oh, and, and Deutsche, there we go. So there's stuff in some German as well. So here is um, your limited warranty and a warranty card and an instruction book as well. So there we go. That tells you um, all you need to know in uh, lots of different languages. Uh, now, this is the exciting bit. So, you can get this out of the box. So you can see it comes with a, a nice carry case. Um, it's uh, it's got a zip on it and a nice little sort of stitched rubberized um, sort of badge thing there with the Sigma uh, brand on it and EX. EX is what they use as a designation for their sort of high quality uh, kind of premium stuff. Um, and inside you can see that uh, you know you've got the, the the lens itself. Actually, when it sits that way up in the box, you can see um, this is you know second hand, um, so it has already been unboxed. Um, but um, that's uh, the you know that that's holds the, the lens inside there, so it doesn't rattle around when you're carrying it, stuff like that. Um, so um, it's quite padded on the top there, um, and actually the top of that part has got some padding on it as well. Um, on the uh, the, the bottom, uh, it's yeah, there's a little bit and a tiny bit on the sides, but there's not a huge amount. There is a loop there that you can stick onto a belt or you know carry somehow if that's what you really want to do but uh, it, it's good enough it's it's nothing dramatic um, you know I wouldn't drop it with it in that to be honest um, but it's okay um, so um, this is the lens itself it, it's quite a heavy feeling lens um, I think the weight on this comes in at about 585 grams something like that I'm sure somebody will correct me um, but it's somewhere around there so it's just a just a snick under under 600 grams you know it feels solid enough um, there's a, there is some rattling in there, whether that's coming from the um, optical stabilization gubbins um, or just from the lens hood, I don't know. Let's take the lens hood off. No, it still rattles. Let's see if it's anything to do with that. No, the rattling is, let's take everything off that can possibly come off. No, there's a lot of rattling coming from inside there. Um, but there we are. Um, it, it otherwise feels pretty nice. Um, you've got some buttons on the side here. Um, this is to turn the optical stabilization on and off. 
and actually that switch feels really nice. It's, it's got a good positive click to it. You know, you're in no doubt as to the fact that it's clicked. Um, that's very nice. And it's the same with the autofocus to manual focus switch there. One thing that has to be said on this, which differentiates it from the, because Nikon do an equivalent of this, which is like the 17 to 55. Uh, and on that one, when you're in uh, autofocus, um, you can, when it's in autofocus, do fine tune ad adjustment, you know, by turning the focus ring manually to fine tune if you want to. This, you can't do that. You'll actually damage the motor if you try that. So you must remember to switch it from autofocus to manual focus before you can release that dial and allow it to um, focus uh, manually. Uh, but it has to be said that this is a lot cheaper. It's about half the price of the um, of the, of the Nikon lens. So um, you know it, it, it pays you money, it gets you it takes your choice on that one, I guess. Um, the focus is very very smooth. Um, that uh, that's the focus ring. It feels very very tight. There's no there's no focus creep with this. Sometimes the lenses kind of breathe a little bit, and that means that when you hold it in the telephoto and un, you know the sort of suction in it, the, the the vacuum in it will will will, will you know it lets air in and that drops the lens down. This one doesn't do that, so it stays kind of where it should do. Uh, so that's very nice. Um, some people have complained that the um, you know that's you know, in terms of the the the, the focusing uh, from uh, from manual uh, sorry from from you know one side to the other so from uh, close focus to infinity there's not a very long throw on that so if you are trying to do precision focusing it can be quite difficult and apparently that's difficult for video um, it has to be said I've not really tried it for video um, yet so I you know can't really swear to that at this stage but um, it, it it feels quite loose actually um, there's a little it's not really play so much but it just feels like there's no it feels easy to knock like that. I mean, it's it's really loose. That it's definitely not as nice a feeling as the uh, as the zoom. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty good. The nice thing about this is that the uh, the, the lens takes a, a 77 millimeter thread. So that means that if you've got other things like a 70 to 200, um, and, and you know that's the kind of that's the sort of standard professional uh, filter size. And so you know you kind of you can use the same filters for that. You've got neutral density filters and things like that, especially useful for doing video. Uh, but any any sort of 77 mil thread you can stick onto that. Uh, the uh, lens cap on there i have actually had some issues with that i've been doing a, a little bit of um shooting with it and in the next video i'm going to do so, show you some examples of that but i have had some issues with that really sort of you know staying on there okay especially when you've got the lens hood on um it, it it's a little bit fiddly to get that in there and it see it doesn't really want to want to go on terribly tightly and you know the danger is of course that'll get knocked off in the bag and then the elements will get scratched and you know all that kind of stuff uh, but other than that it seems like a really good quality lens um, you know for the money that you you can get these for as well I mean I've actually I bought this on eBay I bought it second hand and I paid um, including shipping and things it was about 260 pounds um, the, uh, the 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 price actually it came with the original receipt in the um, in, in the bag and it was 500 quid two years ago um, you know, so I, you know, which I think actually is also you know reasonable for the the lens that it is. Uh, we'll come on to sharpness and uh, you know the, the the shooting aspect of it in the next video. But I, I would absolutely say that that's a, a you know a good price. And if you can get them second hand for half that like this, then it's it's absolutely a steal. And if you are looking to upgrade from your uh, eighteen to fifty five kit lens. This is a very, very good place to start. Um, so that's it. In the next video, we're going to be having a look at some examples and doing a full review in real world situations of what the lens is like to shoot with. Um, I've taken it on a, um, on a couple of different shoots and I will show you what that's like in the next video. So in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe on, in the button that's on the side of the screen there and I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Cheers. If you like that video, click on these videos. You may well like them too. Cheers.